For the first step of the installation of your headache rack on your Kawasaki mule, you'll mount the rear panel to your factory headache rack frame using our brackets. You'll place the panel into position, wrapping the bracket around the factory headache rack frame, lining up the bolts, and inserting your bolt through the hole before capping it off with a lock nut. When you're installing your rear panel, you want to line up the panel with your frame on the back of your mule so you can line up all the bolt holes, which will help us locate our winch mount. Once you have all your brackets and mounting hardware started, you can go ahead and begin to tighten evenly before we move on to our winch mount. For the next step, we'll go ahead and mount our fair lead to our winch mount plate. The fair lead will be located in your winch box. You'll open it up. You can take your harness, your winch, fair lead, all the components out of the box. We'll go ahead and mount our fair lead directly to our winch mount. You'll use the hardware provided in the winch box to mount your fair lead to your winch mount plate. Once you have your fair lead installed, we can move on to mounting your winch mount to your OEM headache rack on your Kawasaki mule. Once you have your fair lead mounted, you can go ahead and put your winch mount into position. You'll slide it in through your rear panel and over the factory frame before fastening the top end of your back mount for the winch mount and moving on to the lower bolts. When placing your winch mount in position, you'll have your lower back half underneath the bottom side of your main winch mount that holds the fair lead. You'll start off by fastening your upper bolts using your Allen head bolt and a nylon lock nut. You'll tighten it up from the top just a little bit. You're gonna keep it snug but not fully tight so we can get our lower bolts in before we mount the winch. Once you have your upper bolts loosely started, you can move on to your four lower bolts. You'll have two bolts in front of the OEM headache rack frame and two bolts behind it. For lower bolts, we started with the two rearmost bolts. They'll contact up against the back side of your OEM frame. Then you can move on to putting the two front bolts in. With all your bolts started, you can go ahead and tighten all your hardware evenly before moving on to mounting your winch. When you're going to install your winch into the winch mount, you're going to want to make sure and feed your winch cable through the fair lead before you mount the winch to the winch mount. We'll use our M6 hardware with a lock washer to fasten the winch to the winch mount. Once you have all four of your winch mounting bolts started, you can go ahead and tighten them all up evenly with a 10 millimeter socket. Once you have your winch tight, you can go ahead and lock the spool on your winch and fasten the winch top to the winch cable using the hardware provided in your winch box. When you're fastening your winch mount to the winch cable, you want to be sure not to over tighten it. You just have to snug the bolts up and that's all you'll need. Once you have your winch top all tightened up, you can move on to mounting your winch hook. You'll simply slide the clevis through the winch hook, through the cable, and use your cotter pin to lock the clevis pin in place, spreading the cotter pin out so that it can't back out. For the headache rack on our Kawasaki Mule, we designed some bed limiting brackets that'll stop the weight of the winch from pulling on the OEM strut. It'll limit the bed travel by a couple degrees to save your strut when you're winching in the bed up position. You'll use needle nose pliers to remove the cotter pin that holds the clevis pin that fastens the bed to the bed frame on the vehicle. With your cotter pin removed, you can go ahead and slide the clevis pin out of position in preparation for the installation of our bracket. When you're installing your bracket, you'll have the flat face of the bracket facing the front of the vehicle and slide it up into position. Once you have your winch fully mounted to the vehicle, you can go ahead and move on to the wiring portion of the installation. Here we have the wiring harnesses provided in your winch box. Here you can see the manual switch if you do not like, want to use the remote control. The first thing we're gonna do is remove this handlebar clamp since it's not used on this application. You'll remove this nut and bolt and save it for later, as well as these two nuts and bolts, which will allow us to mount our winch contactor box to the vehicle. Next step of the installation, we'll use the hardware that came provided with the switch on your winch box, 
along with the winch box using as a template to drill some holes to show where to mount it. We'll fasten it using the provided hardware. For the next step, we'll use our winch contactor box as a template to show the bolt pattern to drill the holes as for a location of where to mount the winch contactor box. We'll mount this winch box on the inside of the battery compartment, but you can drill the holes from the outside for easier access. With your holes marked, you can go ahead and drill them out and mount the winch contactor box to the inside of the battery panel using the hardware that came from our winch switch. Here we have the junction box we're gonna to use to extend the wires from the winch contactor box up to the winch on the top of the bed. We'll use it as a template by placing it on the underside of the passenger side brake light mount, marking with a pen or pencil, drill the holes out, and then we'll mount it on the inside of the tail light assembly to keep it clean and out of the way of everything that can move. Once we have our junction box mounted up, I went ahead and connected the wires from the winch contactor box to the battery and ran the wires from the contactor box back towards our junction box, tying up our excess wire and zip tying it out of the way to make sure it can't contact any rotating or hot components. In preparation for us to mount it to our junction box back here on the inside of the tail light. But before we do that, we'll run the wires down from the winch on the headache rack so we can connect both, all four wires at the same time. Here we have our extension wires that we'll use to route from the headache rack down to our junction box. They're the same length and the same color, so we went ahead and put some blue painter's tape on both sides of one of the wires to help us keep track of the blue terminal from the winch to the junction box. You'll use a 10 millimeter socket to fasten the wires to your winch before we show you how to route it down to your junction box. With our wires ran from our winch contactor box and down from our winch, we can go ahead and connect them to the bus bar, matching the blue terminals together and the yellow terminals, matching on the same terminal of the junction box before moving on. On the inside of the cab where your wires route around from the top side to the underside of the bed, there's a plastic lip that runs about 10 inches under the bed. You wanna mark it where your wires run and clearance it with a grinder so your wires have plenty of room to move around. For the next step in our headache rack wiring, we'll take our switch mount, and fasten it to our switch before moving the two OEM bolts that fasten the bed latch on the driver or passenger side. You can use this bracket on either side. Once you have that fastened, you'll mount your switch and one last wire to hook up on the passenger side, you're good to go. If your switch bracket mounted the switch, you can move on to removing the two OEM bolts using a 10 millimeter socket or wrench and mounting the bracket behind this OEM latch mount. For the last step of the wiring, you'll snip off the ring terminal on your red wire coming from the switch and replace it with a bullet connector that'll tie into the factory harness that'll allow key on power to get sent to the switch. Once you have the bullet connector spliced on the red wire coming from your switch, you're gonna find a connector on the passenger rear of the frame that has two green female bullet connectors. You'll probe them with a test light with the key on to find key on power. Over the terminal located that has key on power, you can go ahead and connect your red wire, button everything else back up, you're ready to hit the trails. So for an overview of the wiring on our headache rack for a Kawasaki Mule, the first step you want to do is you'll mount your winch contactor box on the inside of the battery panel, and you'll run the battery wires from coming from the contactor box, mount them to battery terminals before running the winch wires from your winch contactor box back towards the passenger rear brake light, which is where we mounted our junction box. After that, you'll tie in your jumper wires from the winch to the wires from the contactor box at the junction box to allow your bed to tilt back and forth before running the wiring harness for your switch down the passenger side frame rail, zip tying it to the O2 sensor harness before coming in to the rear driver's side panel where we mount our switch. And after that, you'll just wanna make sure you zip tie everything up, keep it away from any hot or rotating components, and you're ready to go. So before you use your headache rack on your Kawasaki Mule, there's a few safety features we want to go over and discuss just so you don't get yourself hurt or get into a bind. Because the bed is adjustable on your mule, with the seats 
fold it forward in your bed in the extended position. Do not recommend using the headache rack with the bed tilted back. The adjustment that allows your bed to articulate between full and minimum extension do not have a lock that's strong enough to withstand the strength full winch. While we do not recommend the use of the winch while the bed is in the fully extended position, that only pertains to when the bed is in the tilt position. If the bed is fully locked down with the bed extended for maximum bed area, you're free to use the headache rack and the winch with the bed in the down position. Something to keep in mind when you're using the bed in the minimum position with the bed tilted up, when you're loading something into the back, you have to be careful once the load is actually placed into the bed. The strut that's used to lift the bed up is not very strong, so if you load something that's 200 pounds in the back, it'll force the bed down and can possibly slam you or other stuff under the bed. So just as a short recap, if you're going to use the winch on your headache rack, you can use it in both bed positions when the bed space is minimal. The rear seat folded down, you can use it in either the bed down or the bed tilted back position. If the bed is tilted back, you want to be sure and be careful when applying a load into the bed as the bed is liable to slam down forward because the strut that's used to lift the bed is not very strong. With the bed at max extension, with your rear seats folded forward, you only want to use the winch for the headache rack when the bed is down and clamped securely using the fasteners on the driver and passenger side of the vehicle. When the bed is moved forward in the max position, you do not want to use your headache rack with the bed tilt. With the wiring all finished up and all your bolts tight, you're ready to go hit the trails and enjoy your new headache rack.